In this video, I'll be dealing with retail lecture part of PT speaking. Most of the students struggle with retail lecture because they worry about content way too much. However, the marks are given on the basis of content, fluency and pronunciation. So in this video, I'll be giving you some of the tips to improve your marks in retail lecture as well as I'll be dealing with the scoring criteria. First of all, in retail lecture, the marks are awarded on the basis of content. Five marks are given if the person details all points of the presentation, describes characters, aspects, actions, their relationships, the underlying development, implications and conclusions. And four marks if the person describes all key points of the presentation. Three marks if the person deals with most points in the presentation. Two marks if the person deals with only one key point and one mark if the person describes some basic elements of the presentation and zero mark if the person mentions some disjointed elements of the presentation. So technically, this sounds so complex, but believe me, if you have mentioned all the points set by speaker earlier and give a short and sweet conclusion at the end, you will get more marks in content section. In order to get more marks in content, you need to improve your listening skills as well. And this is how total marks are awarded. 5 marks for content, 5 for pronunciation and 5 for fluency. And most of the time we make a biggest mistake, we worry only about the content. And this way we lose marks in pronunciation as well as in fluency. So in this video I'll be dealing with how to improve marks in every section of the retail lecture. First of all you need to improve your listening skills. How can you do it? You can watch Hollywood movies and you can watch Hollywood TV shows. They worked very well for me. You can listen to news and these two are the websites where you can easily find written scripts as well as speaking lectures. Manythings.com and BBC. And this way you can easily improve your listening skills and you can practice for read aloud, for retail lecture as well as repeat sentence from these two websites. Next is what you can do when the recording begins. First important point is make notes. It's very very important because making notes gives you confidence. You have content in your hands and you can easily speak about it. Second point is if you make notes our brain automatically memorizes the things which we write. So this way you can easily memorize the content the speaker told recently. And this is how writing helps you in reproducing the lecture in a confident and proper way. Next is don't try to write whole sentences. Make sure you have written only keywords because it will be easy to speak. And try to make a flowchart. Don't write the content in paragraphs in whole sentences because it will be too difficult to reproduce it. Make a flowchart so that you can easily see all the items and content and you can see it clearly and you can talk about it. Just write the main topic on the top of flowchart so that you remember the central idea of the lecture as well as conclusion of the lecture. Be careful with the tense. Suppose the speaker is talking in future tense. He is saying uh, we will be building a robot means he is saying they will be building the robot in future. Don't just say the speaker explained that they have built a robot. This way you will lose marks in content section. Just when you talk, try to talk for whole 40 seconds or more than 35 seconds. Don't just be quiet after 20 seconds or 15 seconds. This way you will lose marks in content as well as in fluency as well as in pronunciation. So make sure you talk for more than 35 seconds. So in next page, I'll be telling you how I make notes in retail lecture. What nutritional guidelines should we be following? Well, probably the best source of nutritional guidelines are those that are issued by the American Cancer Society or the National Cancer Institute. And the American Cancer Society, for example, offers four really basic, simple nutrition guidelines. The first guideline, which in my mind is the most important, is to choose most of the foods that you eat from plant sources. We can talk in more detail about that in a moment. The second guideline is to limit your intake of high-fat foods, particularly from animal sources. The third guideline is to be physically active and achieve a normal, healthy body weight. And the final guideline is to limit consumption of alcoholic beverages if you choose to drink at all. So, Susan, one of the things we always hear about from uh 
the American Cancer Society is this five a day recommendation. Maybe if you could explain to our listening audience what that actually means. The five a day recommendation is a very simple way of communicating the message to increase consumption of these plant foods. And what five a day means is five servings per day of fruits and vegetables in total. And some people misunderstand this guideline, and they may think it's okay if I have five glasses of fruit juice a day and I've met my five-a-day guideline. The goal is really to choose both fruits and vegetables as part of the five-a-day guideline. Okay, as you have seen, this is how I make notes in a flowchart manner. And I don't write full sentences and I don't write full words. This is nutritional. This is American Cancer Society. These are the guidelines. And these are my short forms. And if I have written the content in this way, I can easily reproduce it. I can say, the lecture was related to nutritional guidelines given by American Cancer Society. There were four total guidelines. The first one was to increase the food plant sources. Second is to decrease high fat animal foods. Third one was to increase physical activity and maintain weight. Fourth one was to decrease alcohol intake. They have also given a five a day recommendation program according to which the person should take five servings of foods and vegetables per day. In conclusion, the lecture was related to nutritional guidelines in order to decrease the risk for cancer. So you have seen how easily I can talk related to the content I have written earlier in a flowchart manner. So this is how you can make notes and this is how you can memorize the content and this is how you can easily explain that content in a sequence. Next is retail emergencies because there are some of the problems we face in retail. First is the topic is very weird and totally unknown. It happens with me so many times because I don't watch news and I don't read newspaper and there are so many topics which are totally unknown to me. And if you couldn't hear properly and how we can manage these emergencies if you haven't hear anything in that lecture or the topic was way too weird and you couldn't understand it. First of all, our lecture was related to nutritional guidelines and there were four nutritional guidelines and this, this was the content of the lecture. Suppose you have heard only two things, nutritional guidelines and decreased risk of cancer. Don't just say only one sentence and keep quiet. Don't say the lecture was related to nutritional guidelines to decrease risk of cancer. That's it. This way you will lose marks in content in fluency as well as in pronunciation. So how can you overcome this? Just try to say the lecture was related to the nutritional guidelines to reduce the risk of cancer. The speaker explained regarding nutrition to prevent cancer. These guidelines provide a guidance to choose nutrition to lower the cancer risk. In conclusion, the lecture was related to the importance of nutrition to prevent cancer. I know that doesn't ma make any sense. I know this is only one sentence which I have paraphrased and made four sentences. But this way you can easily get one or two marks in content because you have mentioned related to two aspects. But your fluency and pronunciation marks will be more. This way you can easily get 12 or 13 marks out of 15. But if you have said just one sentence saying the lecture was about nutritional guidelines to reduce risk of cancer. This way you will get zero marks in content, you will get zero in fluency, you will get zero in pronunciation or maybe one one. So this, this is how you, you will get only three marks out of 15. So what I'm trying to say, suppose you have only heard two words, just make sure you paraphrase them and say three to four sentences and don't forget to give a conclusion. So let's just take next example. This was our content and suppose you have only heard decreased risk of cancer. You couldn't hear or understand anything out of this. You only heard decreased risk of cancer. So in this case, don't lose fluency and pronunciation marks by just keeping quiet. So what you can say, the speaker explained regarding risk of cancer and how to reduce it. He gave several ideas to reduce the risk of cancer among people. 
In conclusion, the lecture was about techniques to lower the cancer risk. I know this is not at all related to this. And I, I, I think you will get zero mark in content section. But in fluency and pronunciation, you will easily get marks. So technically, getting 10 marks out of 15 is better than getting zero mark out of 15. So what I'm trying to say is, if you have heard only one word or if there's any emergency, you haven't heard anything, just make sure you say anything. Create anything, paraphrase the sentences and give a conclusion and make sure you don't stop talk talking before 35 seconds. This is very important in retail lectures and most of the students, they keep quiet when they don't have content. They only worry about the content and they think we haven't heard anything and we, so we can't talk anything. So make sure you talk more than 35 seconds and paraphrase the sentences. The next is if the topic is weird or totally unknown. Again, don't worry if it doesn't make sense. Just make sure you say anything. Suppose this was the topic and I couldn't understand anything related to this. The invention of geography coordinate system is, uh, I don't know, what they have written. I understood only one word that is geographic coordinate system. So make sure you talk anything. The lecture was about geographical coordinate system. The speaker explained the system by giving several examples. He explained that how geographical coordinate system was used. In short, the central idea of the lecture was to explain regarding geographical coordinate system. So technically, I don't encourage you to do this every time because there are always listening marks which are awarded from retail lecture. But in case of emergency, if you haven't heard any word or you haven't understood the lecture, just make sure you don't keep quiet and say three to four sentences by paraphrasing them. And the best idea is to talk about topic first. The lecture was about geographical coordinate system. Next, start with the speaker explained the system by giving several examples. This is also a great line. Again, then, then create something. He explained that how geographical coordinate system was used. I know this is not related to the paragraph and you will get zero or one mark in the content, but still you have chance to get marks in fluency as well as pronunciation. Next is the format. There is no universal format for retail lecture, but you can start with the speaker explained or the lecture was about in first sentence you you should talk about the topic the speaker explained related to dolphins the lecture was related to tigers and you, or you can start directly that the nutritional guidelines are important for us the nutrition is important for us you can start but i always prefer the speaker explained or the lecture was about next is don't forget to give conclusion at the end, make sure you always say in conclusion. If you don't understand the conclusion, just say anything related to the topic or you can just paraphrase the topic again. Like the speaker explained related to the dolphins. In conclusion, you can say that. In conclusion, the lecture was related to dolphins. However, you don't understand the conclusion of the lecture, but make sure you always give a short and sweet conclusion. Next is, don't say he said, he explained in every sentence. Why I'm saying that? Because there are two forms of speech, direct speech and indirect speech. And when you say, he said that, you need to paraphrase and you need to change the whole tense of the sentence. For example, John said, I'll give you a pen. John said that he would give me a pen. So if you say he said that in every sentence, so you need to paraphrase or you need to change the tense of that sentence, every sentence. And this is where you get confused. I'm not so confident with the indirect form of speech. So this is why I don't say he said he explained in every sentence. I just say it in the beginning like the speaker explained related to the nutritional deficiencies or nutritional guidelines given by American Cancer Society. There were four guidelines. I don't say the speaker said that there were four guidelines. 
just there's no need to say that make sure you say the speaker explained in first sentence but if you are good at indirect speech you can say it in every sentence there's nothing wrong in that i'm just saying because i'm not so confident with indirect form of speech and i make grammatical errors while i do that next is don't lose fluency and pronunciation for the content marks this is the most common mistake we all do we only worry about the content and if we don't able to produce the content we just keep quiet don't do that talk about anything for 35 seconds any one aspect of the lecture paraphrase it say anything but don't keep quiet because you will lose marks in fluency and pronunciation as well and this will cause decrease in total marks of speaking so if you get zero mark in content but still there are chances to get four five marks in fluency and four five marks in pronunciation so at the end in short just don't forget to make a flow chart make sure you have written the whole content in keywords and try to talk for more than 35 seconds this is again very important just talk for more than 35 seconds don't keep quiet in between and don't correct yourself in between if you have said anything wrong just don't try to correct it and i have explained regarding fluency and pronunciation in my previous video so make sure you have watched that and practice using google speech to text in order to improve your pronunciation well thank you so much for watching my videos